Welcome to the 17mm focal length of the SR Lounge Canon Lens War series. In this video, we're going to be comparing the Canon 16-35 f2.8L versus the 17-40 f4L. Now, for those of you that are new to the SR Lounge Canon Lens War series, be sure to check out the actual intro video where we introduce the series, we talk about our testing methodology and the approach and so forth. As well as be sure to check out all the other videos on each focal length as well. Now, in this video, we're comparing the 16-35 f2.8L and the 17-40 f4L, both of them set to a 17mm focal length. Now, let's start from the top with their visible aesthetic qualities at their respective WOAs, or their wide open apertures, W-O-A, hence WOA. All right, so once again, this is a visual test of differences, not a technical test. So we're trying to distinguish differences in appearance while viewing the images full screen on a 27-inch 3K resolution display. With both lenses at their WOAs of f2.8 for the 16-35 and f4 for the 17-40, well, I immediately noticed that the 16-35 is actually rendering a decent amount of bokeh compared to the 17-40. And I probably should pronounce bokeh the right way, which is bokeh, but uh, I don't know, I say it kind of quick, so sometimes I just say bokeh. Forgive me, all right? But we noticed that, that we can see this difference basically in the area that's surrounding the model. And it's not a ton, but still it's impressive that we actually can render a bit of bokeh out of this lens given that it's at 17 millimeters. However, it's also visually noticeable too that this model is slightly less sharp in the 1635 shot than when compared to the 1740, which is at f4. It's not a ton, but there is a slight difference. But interestingly, while the 1740 does have slightly better center frame sharpness at f4, well, because it's at f4 instead of f2.8, which the 1635 is at, still the image is visually sharper towards the edge of the frame even when at f2.8 on the 1635. In addition, color and contrast, they also appear to be pretty equal, but the 1635 steps ahead, maybe just barely in that area as well. Okay, so let's go up to f4 on both lenses, which is their widest common aperture, or as we refer to as WCA, or should I say WICA? All right, so WCA, that sounds good. Now, immediately when we jump up to F4, uh, the 1635, it does leap ahead visually. At F4, the 1635 still displays more bokeh than the 1740, which really appears to have pretty much none. Edge detail is also clearly visibly sharper on the 1635, and center image detail has also stepped beyond the 1740 as well. And this can all be verified by zooming in, particularly into the dress area on our model. And since we've stepped beyond f2.8 for the 1635 lens, the lens vignetting has also been significantly reduced. So at f4, we don't see hardly any lens vignetting on the 1635, but we do see quite a bit still at the 1740, uh, or on the 1740, because we are still at the widest open aperture on this lens. Also, color and contrast once again are rendering quite a bit better on the 16 and 35 as well at f4. Now, visually, the 1635 creates more bokeh and also has a different look that really holds up all the way through around f8, and that's pretty much where we figure out that they kind of both visually equalize in terms of, say, bokeh. But, however, through all the apertures, the 1635 still remains sharper from center to the edge of the frame compared to the 1740, which is extremely soft around its edges. In addition, the 1635 also retains better contrast and color as well throughout all of the apertures, but it's kind of most noticeable with both lenses around f4. Distortion was quite similar between both lenses at the 17 millimeter focal length, and both lenses had a decent amount of barrel distortion, really a very similar amount. And both showed roughly the same amount of perspective distortion, which was caused by basically the camera position just being so close to the subject matter to keep that composition. So our model looks slightly more distorted on the 16 to 35, but most likely that was due simply to the fact that there was a slight change in the framing on the 16 to 35. So don't let that fool you. But when it comes to low light situations, the 16 to 35 does give you a full extra stop of light performance, or basically double the light than when compared to the 17 to 40. In addition, at f2.8, the overall center to edge sharpness of the 16 to 35 is far better than the 17 to 40 when we're talking about center to edge. So while the center lacked a little bit, Overall, from center to edge, the 16 to 35 is still far better than the 17 to 40, making its wide open setting just a bit more functional because on this one, I typically don't like to shoot wide open because the edges are just too soft. 
So visually, the 16-35 f2.8 is simply a better lens in every regard. It renders a decent amount of bokeh for an extreme wide-angle lens, and when it's even at the same aperture, we still notice a difference when it comes to the aesthetics of the bokeh. Now, it also has better color, better contrast, better center-to-edge sharpness, and an additional stop of low-light performance as well. But the 17-40 does have a list price of around $850, bucks, while the 16-35 is basically double the price at $1,700. So here's what I would say. If you're on a budget, and say you're primarily shooting landscapes and nature, or really you're working around f8 to f11 anyway, you're not going to see a huge visual difference between these two lenses. Their focal lengths are similar enough, and the overall contrast and color coming from both is also quite similar and quite good as well on each lens. So in that kind of a situation, save the money and go with a 17 to 40 because it is half the price. But if you need low light performance, or if you need the lens to be sharper at wide open apertures, or simply you just want the best overall image quality, and maybe a little bit of bokeh as well, then step up to the 16 to 35 because it is noticeably better. I hope you all enjoyed the 17mm focal length installment in the SR Lounge Canon Lens War series. Be sure to check out the article by clicking in the description below the video for more example images, more information on each lens, as well as links on where you can pick them up. My name is Pai and I'll see you all in the next episode.